Hey guys, this is Ricky from iCorrect. Um, so you've probably read the headlines which read that you lose face ID when completing a screen repair on an iPhone 13. And this has all got to do with the microchip that actually sits on the screen and communicates with the phone. In previous models of the iPhone, this microchip only communicated with the iPhone itself, so with the central processing unit. But in the iPhone 13, we now believe that this also communicates with face ID. From the early video tests that we've seen from other independent repairers in the industry, we've seen that when replacing a screen with another original, it stops Face ID from working. We were unfortunately late to the party with this iPhone 13 research because we couldn't get our hands on any iPhone 13s. And we'll never make that mistake again. So after setting up my face on each iPhone and actually making sure that everything was working, um, we then proceeded to put screen protectors on each. The screen protectors that we use are called hydrogel film and it's the newest in technology that's been out in less than a year. After fitting the protectors we then proceeded to take the screens up and then confirmed that the screen only has one cable for the actual screen itself and that's a Samsung original design but it's really the microchip that we're interested in here. We actually test Face ID by having the screen out of the housing and at a slight angle to make sure that there is nothing blocking any of the light getting to the Face ID modules. In the dot projector module of Face ID, which is the small module that projects dots at your face to create a 3D image, if you actually block the light going to that module, then it can stop that module from working. And in the background, you can see that I'm setting up Face ID on the first iPhone, and then I switched to the second one. So the first one we bought in was a blue color. This is the black one. And I, again, I went through to set up my face. Um, and you can see that the, um, Front camera is slightly blocked, but the Face ID module isn't blocked, and that's why I can set up Face ID correctly. And as with the other phone, once Face ID is set up, I lock the screen and enter via Face ID to confirm it's working. So now it was time to tag the screens and tag the iPhones, so we could show on camera that we were swapping the screens and ultimately were going to swap over one of the screen ICs, which is the microchip that sits on the screen. The black iPhone 13 is tagged with a white tag and the blue with a yellow. And here we are swapping the screens over to complete the test. And our test here is to attach the screen marked with a yellow tag on the iPhone tagged with the white tag and to test if it gives us a display message and how Face ID reacts. If you've watched other videos of breakdowns already, you'll understand that this is gonna show us an error, but I can talk you through what they mean if you haven't. In the iPhone 13, Apple have merged all of their facial recognition components, the infrared camera, the dot projector, and the flood illuminator into one module that sits within the housing. The iPhone is displaying this non-genuine message telling us that it's unable to verify if the screen is genuine because it's reading a, a different code from the microchip on the screen. talk about this technology in a little more detail in a blog that I've written which I'll attach in the description. It's not super technical the blog, I want to keep it as simple as possible. So in the background you see me access Face ID through the settings app and try to set up Face ID with the incorrect screen and Face ID does show a message to say it's not available. It tells us to try later in the settings but we know that this won't work. So now we've confirmed that there is a fault when replacing one screen with another original screen, we wanted to go further into this investigation. We believe that the fault lies with the microchip on the actual screen itself, so we went through and tagged the main microchips and the side one also. And this is just with a number one and a number two. Now both screens go to Misha to remove the microchips. Our theory is it's only the bigger IC that will control and speak to Face ID, and that's because it's the chip with the most integration it has more possible functions. Again, I've written about it on my blog. So I was laughing with Misha when she put the screen um, on the plate and had loads of Captain Tape around it because I'm super anti-Captain Tape. I hate it, but she was super paranoid of breaking the screen. We whizzed through those shots really quickly, but this is the screen I see, the screen's integrated circuit. It was only originally designed to translate your analog touch, so your touch on your touch screen into a digital signal so that your iPhone could understand. Your iPhone being a machine can't understand analog touch, so it requires this chip to convert that signal into something that it does understand. The complex integration bit comes in where this same chip that was able to just 
translate one signal to another is now able to do other things. And those other things are holding memory information through the use of ROM, read-only memory. And again, I've detailed this in my blog and where it all started. So then we put the chip onto the other screen. So um, chip one onto screen two. And then it was time to place the screen back on the phone. So screen two onto iPhone one. And also to confirm, we're not gonna be plugging in the proximity sensor as we confirmed it has no function in face ID. So this is just a zoom in shot of both ICs. That second IC will leave for investigation for another day. It was only the main IC that we wanted to investigate today. I say today, but I mean last night, this is all footage of last night's research. Just plugging in the battery here, just making sure that the power is going into the phone. And we're initially looking for any long boot times. Long boot times can indicate issues in an iPhone early on. It would be cool if we could actually see the BIOS loading in the background instead of an Apple logo. That would be really fun to see. But I appreciate, of course, why it's a simple Apple logo on a black screen. So no crazy boot times, but I've heard that the iPhone 13 had a longer boot time than other models. So on load, we have no display message and no Face ID message showing. And even when entering the phone, nothing. So lock the screen and there you see we can enter by a Face ID. Our conclusion here that the microchip on the actual screen itself is communicating with facial recognition now, Face ID. But that then brings us to the question of why. Well, we believe that maybe in the iPhone 14, or it could be later, there will be some type of biometric underneath the screen and touch ID or some level of that. And this integrated circuit will need to communicate with that biometric. This is really just a glimpse into the future. So with this iPhone here, I went through and set up Face ID again, just to confirm that we're able to enter with Face ID working on this screen and this iPhone. Just to confirm again, I have iPhone 1 and microchip 1 and screen 2. And this was Ricky and Misha from iCorrect, and I appreciate you watching our research into the Face ID issue surrounding iPhone 13.